Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, some of the quintessential remakes of the Pokemon franchise despite being over a decade old. These games continued to bring so much, building upon the Johto region we knew while adding new ideas. And of course, with every remake comes a lot of character redesigns. There's no better place to start than with the protagonists. And in this case, we have some weird changes. Not so much in terms of design, but for one thing, rather than being named Gold, our hero is now called Ethan. And yes, these are meant to be the same character. Not much has changed, it's still the same overall outfit of a hoodie with shorts. Keeping the skater kind of look because we were supposed to get a skateboard in this game. The iconic backwards hat and hair is also the same, which is the most important. Though the hoodie design is different while still being white and red. The pants now are black and more fitted. This along with the backpack being smaller and having a single strap, helps to tie together the more active look to match all the important walking features of these games. Both with the Pokemon in game and the Pokewalker in real life. Overall, just some nice updates while keeping the outfit mostly intact. Now, as for the female protagonist, there's a lot going on here, which I think could just be its own video sometime in the future, and so it will be. But for the basics, Lyra and Chris are not the same, so this doesn't count as a redesign. The rival of this game also maintains his original appearance. Having the same basic clothing with some differences in the details to make it fit in with the more modern clothing of Pokemon. Though Silver did get to keep his original name, which I kind of find weird. His hairstyle is changed though to give him a more unique look and a distinguishable silhouette. It could also be meant to resemble Ariana's hair to hint at a familial connection. Again, our two main boys are just nice ways to modernize their previous looks. And now when it comes to the topic of the Johto Gym Leaders, there isn't really a good source of full body key art to take a good look at their characters. At least not a widely known source. Enter Pokemon vs, a Japanese-only TCG set that features characters from the Johto era incorporated into various cards. All of these characters are drawn by Ken Sugimori just like the key art at the time. And now let me also introduce you to hi res Pokemon Art, a blog dedicated to restoring and preserving official Pokemon art. Thankfully, they've rescued these images, so I strongly encourage you to check out the Tumblr and Twitter account because there are some beautiful Pokemon gems. And so we can continue by looking at Faulkner, though he really doesn't have a lot going on. He has the same overall appearance, the same basic clothes, the same facial expression. His coat now has some added spots to break up the colors, and he also has different shoes instead of the socks and sandals. You'll also notice that he wears his gym badge on his coat, but all of the gym leaders do in this specific art. So I won't be addressing it in later designs. I just figured I'd give it to Faulkner because he's one of the least interesting designs. But his basic expression and traditional clothing is meant to fit his character of someone who's cool and calm during battles, as a master of flying type Pokemon. Bugsy also looks pretty similar, but has a different shade of green for his clothing as well as this goofy looking tie. He does have this pouch on his hip where we can see a magnifying glass as he might need when researching bug Pokemon. But I actually like the older design better. I feel like the earthier shade of green makes him feel more like a bug type trainer. It also pulls off the camper look more effectively. His old pose is also more active, making it seem like he's actually out researching instead of standing for a photo. Whitney appears the same at first, but we can see that her redesign makes her shirt a little bigger, and adds distinct buttons on the front. She also wears a wristband to add some asymmetry. This makes her design read as sportier, which fits an old piece of artwork from the Game Freak website at the time, that shows her playing baseball. It also shows that she's wearing blue underneath, which is brought into her redesign by changing the color of her pants. Her socks now have stripes to give her a goofy, fun-loving appearance. Even though the battle that follows will be completely devoid of fun. Also, she has a hair clip to match the buttons on her shirt. A lot of nice little details to better define her. And now, Morty might as well be a different person. Oh my gosh, this old fit was so 90s, but it hurts to look at. Okay, I guess it's fine, but it does not read as a ghost type gym leader. So he loses the blue and yellow, instead wearing black and purple. Though now the lighter color is on his pants so that he doesn't end up being draped in darkness head to toe. Funny that he still keeps the headband. I suppose all it took to make it work was to give him a haircut. He also has a scarf that works to make him look a little more dramatic and mysterious. I just think it's cool that the way it fades from purple into red is meant to resemble Mistrevis' hair. But it's crazy that these two hardly even resemble each other aside from the blonde hair and their headband. This might be the best redesign of the game in my opinion. Chuck is also pretty interesting because he's wearing the least clothing out of anybody, but he still manages to switch the colors of his belt and pants. I think the logic there was to make him look more experienced with a black belt. Weird though that he had a black belt in his video game sprite and his anime appearance. But his pants are definitely red now, I guess because no one else was wearing red. He's also got a barbell just flung over his shoulder like it's nothing, along with the biggest smile on his face unlike last time. Somehow this makes him look less threatening, but so much more intimidating, if that makes sense.
makes any sense. Like, he looks like he's just a fun-loving guy, but jeez, watch where you're flinging that thing. Weird also that he loses the wraps on his feet. I can't really figure out why, but I think they should have kept it. So, Jasmine is still wearing a dress, but it's not as flowy as before. It's also blue. She now instead wears a white sweater. The ribbon on her dress is bigger and is orange to match her hair clips. She has more color in her wardrobe now, and I think that works a little better than just mostly plain white. But neither of them really make her look like a Steel-type trainer. But I guess in Steelix you can see shades of white and blue like this, so I guess it counts. So in terms of color overall, I actually think the original outfit works better. Price is another character that I'm not exactly sure what they were thinking at first. He's just some old guy in casual clothing. I suppose that fits to really make him feel elderly, nearly retired. Even though it's a bit different for his in-game sprite, it's still the same idea. Polo shirt and shorts. The color choice is a bit strange as well, it's almost tropical, which Mahogany Town is definitely not. But I think his redesign gives him the air of a veteran trainer worthy of being the second to last gym leader. Also, he gets this blue coat and scarf because it's cold. His cane is also different, now resembling an icicle. But these two designs literally just look like the only difference is whether you catch him on his day off or whether he's at work as a gym leader. Claire has basically the same getup but with some different colors. Before she wore dark blue, but now it's mostly light blue. Though it's still just as tight. This lighter blue matches the Pokemon that she uses, not only her ace Kingdra, but also Dragonair and Gyarados, which she has in the remakes. She also has a necklace with a gem, which also reminds me of the gem that Dragonair has on its neck. Also now she's wearing a cape, whereas before it was more of a loose coat. I think the reason making it more clearly a cape was so that it matched her cousin and fellow dragon trainer, Lance. Their poses are even mirrored, but to make up for a lack of sleeves, the boots are made even taller. This also makes her ensemble more sleek, again to match the Pokemon that she uses. When it comes to the Elite Four, I've already discussed Koga and Bruno because they were originally Kanto characters, but one of the few new characters for Gold and Silver was Will. And here we have another dramatic glow up. At first he was just wearing a normal suit and tie, but now he's spiced things up wearing something that better fits the masquerade ball aesthetic he had with the mask. Also interesting that now both eyes are completely obscured, making him even more mysterious. I don't know how to feel about Generation 2 Will just staring into my soul with one eye. There's also more gold to fit the fancier appearance as well as the psychic Pokemon. Best of all, he's another character given a more unique hairstyle which helps set him apart from the others. And of course he's posed with much more energy to fit the design overhaul that he went through. We see another drastic development in Karen. She used to wear just a short black dress and later switched to a yellow shirt and white pants. This one I'm not sure how to feel about. The first design is nice because it's primarily black to fit with the dark type Pokemon, but the new design is definitely an improvement because it doesn't look as plain. And you don't need to wear a specific color to prove that you use a certain type of Pokemon, but the franchise is typically so clear with its type specialists that it's become a trope all to its own. But the yellow at least matches the rings on her Umbreon and I think overall it looks nice. It also does stand out because she's wearing such bright clothing despite using dark type Pokemon and of course her personality is much more positive overall, in that she sees the value of all Pokemon. Of course, at this point, Fuchsia City has a new gym leader, Janine, who didn't really have any changes between the originals and the remakes, so she was just given a more dynamic pose. Kurt is also mostly the same, except he's holding a different tool, has thicker eyebrows, and now has a sack of apricorns with him. Yusin also wears the same thing, but this time it has diamond patterns on the front, which is pretty cool, because it's meant to be the same pattern that appears on the side of Suicune. And now it's time for the Rocket executives who have some of the other best redesigns because originally, all the guys just shared the same sprite and were a generic Rocket executive. This guy is just so lame. He looks like Giovanni's younger cousin who's trying way too hard to be cool. Now that Archer, Proton, and Petrol are their own characters, their designs are better by default. Just visually, there's much more character to each of them. I think especially Proton and Petrol. I also like that Archer and Ariana wear white to set them both as the two highest positions. And now we finally get to see both white and black uniforms incorporated into Team Rocket, which we had mostly only seen in the anime beforehand. Ariana also used to be a generic Rocket executive, but there was only one female executive anyway, so this one counts more as a redesign. She's ditched the Karen haircut which we saw in Pokemon Stadium, and again it just has a unique style which I mentioned resembles silver to imply a potential relationship. And I feel like that's kind of a nice way to round everything out. When it comes to character redesigns, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver are honestly a bit of a mixed bag. Some changes are very minor. 
some are full outfit swaps, and others are just completely new creations. I think they still work to help in modernizing the Johto games, at least modern by a 2010 standard. But these remakes had some of my favorite overall feelings in terms of the look, the style, and the execution, and I really enjoyed getting to see these characters that I had first met on the Game Boy Color. They, along with every other aspect, just brought the heart and soul needed for these remakes. But it is kind of strange recently taking a look at all of these remakes because as we go backwards in games, it almost feels like the older these games get, the less dramatic their character redesigns are. But I guess it just really says something in terms of how far the franchise has come in terms of character design. Or at least in being able to execute this character design or just fixing things that maybe weren't the best in the past. But let me know which ones are your favorites. Honestly, Whitney and Morty have just got to be some of my favorites. And so, those were the redesigns of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul silver. Thank you to all of my channel members who make videos like this possible, especially the Great Gators Jackson, Justin R, Mr. Pig Puncher, and Quago. If you'd like to support, get a shout out here and some access to emotes used in comments and live streams, then you can become a channel member today. You can also follow me on Twitter for more memes as well. Anyway, this has been GatorX, and I'll catch you all later. Legends come together in Pokemon trading card game Heart Gold and Soul Silver. With amazing dual card Pokemon Legends and Pokemon Prime. Pokemon trading card game Heart Gold and Soul Silver. In stores now. Each booster pack of 10 cards sold separately cards vary by pack. I know how to make a boo boo feel better. Mm.